Now we're going to take two questions from the UK media and two questions from the American media. Uh, I'll start with Beth Rigby. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister President Trump. Beth Rigby from Sky News. Um, for you, President Trump, as you hold talks with the current Prime Minister, the leader of Her Majesty's opposition has been addressing a protest rally against your visit in Trafalgar Square. He says he's disappointed you attacked the London mayor and he criticised your record on refugees. What do you have to say to him? And is this man someone you could do a trade deal with? And to you, Prime Minister, do you think that Sadiq Khan is a stone-cold loser? Thank you. You're talking about the Mayor of London. Is that who you said? Yes. Well, I think he's been a uh, not very good mayor, from what I understand. He's done a poor job. Crime is up. A lot of problems. And I don't think he should be criticizing uh, a representative of the United States that can do so much good for the United Kingdom. Uh, we talked about it before. He should be positive, not negative. He's a negative force, not a positive force. And if you look at what he said, he hurts the people of this great country. And I think he should actually focus on his job. It'd be a lot better if he did that. He could straighten out some of the problems that he has and probably some of the problems that he's caused. Thank you. Gonna yes, he wanted to meet with me, and I told him no. Yes. Well, I don't know Jeremy Corbyn. Never met him. Never spoke to him. He wanted to meet today or tomorrow, and I, I decided that I would not do that. Uh, I think that he is, from where I come from, somewhat of a negative force. I think that uh, people should look to do things correctly as opposed to criticize. I really don't like critics as much as I like and respect people that get things done. So I've decided not to meet. As far as the protests, I have to tell you, because I commented on it yesterday, uh, we left the Prime Minister, the Queen, the royal family, there were thousands of people on the streets cheering. And even coming over today, there were thousands of people cheering. And then I heard that there were protests. I said, where are the protests? I don't see any protests. I did see a small protest today when I came, very small. So a lot of it is fake news, I hate to say. But you saw the, the people waving the American flag, waving your flag. It was tremendous spirit and love. There was great love. It was an alliance. And I didn't see the protesters until just a little while ago, and it was a very, very small group of people put in for political reasons. So it was fake news. Thank you. And I would say to both the Mayor of London and to Jeremy Corbyn, uh, the discussions that we have had today are about the future of this most important relationship between the US and the UK. As the President described it, the greatest alliance the world has seen. It is this deep, special relationship and partnership between the United States and the United Kingdom that ensures our safety and security, and the safety and security of others around the world too. And it is this relationship that helps to ensure there are jobs that employ people here in the UK and in the United States, that underpins our prosperity and our future. That is a relationship we should cherish. It is a relationship we should build on. It is a relationship we should be proud of. Mr. President, would you like to... Big, and this really is a very big and important alliance. And I think people should act positively toward it because it means so much for both countries. It means so much, and it's been so good. Uh, Steve Holland. Yes, go ahead, Steve. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is that on there? What is your current view on Brexit, sir? Should Britain leave the European Union if there is no agreement by October 31st? And for the Prime Minister, what would be the ramifications for the UK if there is not a deal? Well, I don't like to take positions in things that I'm not, you know, really. Uh, I understand the issue very well. I, I really predicted what was going to happen. Some of you remember that prediction. It was a strong prediction made at a certain location on a development we were opening the day before it happened. And I thought it was going to happen because of immigration more than anything else, but probably it happens for a lot of reasons. But I would say, yeah, I would think that it will happen and it probably should happen. This is a great, great country and it wants its own identity. It wants to have its own borders. 
It wants to run its own affairs. This is a very, very special place, and I think it deserves a special place. And I thought maybe for that reason and for others, but that reason it was going to happen. Yeah, I think it will happen. And I believe the Prime Minister has brought it to a very good point where something will take place in the not-too-distant future. I think she's done a very good job. Uh, I, I believe it would be good for the country, yes. And uh, from my point of view, uh, I believe it is important for us to deliver Brexit. We gave that choice to the British people. Uh, Parliament overwhelmingly gave the choice to the British people. We should now deliver on that choice. I continue to believe that actually it's in the best interests of the UK to leave the European Union in an orderly way with a deal. I think we have a good deal. Sadly, the Labour Party and other MPs have so far stopped us from delivering uh, Brexit and that deal. But we will. But obviously, this is an issue that is going to continue here in the UK. I think the important thing is we deliver Brexit, and once we're out of the European Union, we will be able to do what we've been talking about today and develop not just that free trade agreement, but a broader economic partnership into the future. If I could just follow up but on a related matter, Mr. President, are you prepared to impose limits on intelligence sharing with Britain if they do not put in place some restrictions on Huawei? No, because we're going to have absolutely an agreement on Huawei and everything else. We have an incredible intelligence relationship, and we will be able to work out any differences. I think uh, we're not going to have it. We did discuss it. Uh, I see absolutely no limitations. We've never had limitations. This is a truly great ally and partner, and we'll have no problem with that. Okay? Francis. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Francis Elliott from The Times, D uh, do you agree with your ambassador that the entire economy needs to be on the table in a future trade talk, a trade deal, including the NHS? Uh, and Prime Minister, are you tempted to take the Prime Minister up at, uh, President up at the word and stick around for a bit until a trade deal is done? I think we're going to have a great trade deal, yes. I think we're going to have a great and very comprehensive trade deal. I can't hear him. Right? It's still a national health service. He says, should the national health service be on the table? Look, I think everything with the trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing in trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table, absolutely. But the point about making trade deals is, of course, that both sides negotiate and come to uh, an agreement about what should or should not be in that trade deal for the, uh, for the future. And as regards your second question, Francis, nice try. Uh, but, uh, but no, look, I'm a woman of my word. Mr. President, would you like to? John, please. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, domestically, uh, in recent days, Mexico has stepped up apprehensions and deportations of Central American migrants. Uh, That's good. This could possibly be in, in uh, response to your threat of tariffs. Has Mexico Not possibly be? Has, has Mexico done enough to avoid tariffs, which will be imposed in some six days from now? No, we haven't and, started yet. And and. But the threat is out there. Uh, yeah, the threat is out there. But we haven't really started yet. No, this will take effect next week. And, and what five percent? And what do you think of Republicans who say that they may take action to block you imposing those tariffs? No, I don't think they will do that. I think if they do, it's foolish. Uh, there's nothing more important than borders. I've had tremendous Republican support. I have a ninety percent, ninety-four percent approval rating as of this morning in the Republican Party. That's an all-time record. Can you believe that? Isn't that something? I love records. But we have a 94 percent approval rating in the Republican Party. Uh, I want to see security at our border. I'm going to see great trade. I'm going to see a lot of things happening. And that is happening. And as you know, Mexico called. They want to meet. They're going to meet on Wednesday. Uh, Secretary Pompeo is going to be at the meeting, along with a few others that are very good at this. And we are going to see if we can do something. But I think it's more likely that the tariffs go on. And we'll probably be talking during the time that the tariffs are on and they're going to be paid. And if they don't step up and give us security for our nation, look, millions of people are flowing through Mexico. That's unacceptable. Millions and millions of people are coming right through Mexico. It's a 2,000-mile journey, and they're coming up to our border. And our Border Patrol, which is incredible, they're apprehending them. But our laws are bad because the Democrats don't want to pass laws that could be passed in 15 minutes, that could be passed quickly. 
In one day, it could change. But even beyond the laws, Mexico shouldn't allow millions of people to try and enter our country. And they could stop it very quickly. And I think they will. And if they won't, we're going to put tariffs on. And every month, those tariffs go from 5 percent to 10 percent to 15 percent to 20 and then to 25 percent. And what will happen then is all of those companies that have left our country and gone to Mexico are going to be coming back to us. And that's okay. That's okay. But I think Mexico will step up and do what they should have been done. And I don't want to hear that Mexico is run by the cartels and the drug lords and the coyotes. I don't want to hear about that. A lot of people are saying that. Mexico has something to prove. But I don't want to hear that they're run by the cartels. You understand. You report on it all the time. A lot of people do. That would be a terrible thing. Mexico should step up and stop this onslaught, this invasion into our country, John. And, uh, Prime, Prime Minister May, you, you tried three times to get a deal on Brexit. At, at this point, do you believe that a deal on Brexit is possible, or is this a Gordian knot? President Trump says that you didn't take his advice in terms of negotiation. Uh, should you have, uh, would that have made a difference? And President Trump, if I could ask a follow-up, uh, you had a conversation with Boris Johnson. Uh, could we ask what you spoke about, and will you meet with Michael Gove today? Well, first of all, on the first issues, I said in answer to an earlier question, I still believe, I personally believe, that it is in the best interests of the UK to leave the European Union with a deal. I believe there is a good deal on the, uh, on the table. Obviously, uh, it will be for whoever succeeds me as Prime Minister to take this issue forward. Uh, what is paramount, I believe, is delivering on Brexit for the, for the British people. Um, and I seem to remember the, the President suggested that I sued the European Union, which uh, we didn't do. We went into negotiations and we came out with a good deal. Yeah. That's not such a I would have sued, but that's okay. <laughs> I would have sued and settled, maybe, but you never know. She's probably a better negotiator than I am, Jeremy. But you know what? She has got it, in a sense, John. That deal is teed up. I think that deal is really teed up. I think they have to do something. And perhaps you won't be given the credit that you deserve if they do something. But I think you deserve a lot of credit. I really do. I think you deserve a lot of credit. Okay. Yes, John? So I know Boris. Uh, I like him. I've liked him for a long time. He's uh, — I think he'd do a very good job. I know Jeremy. I think he'd do a very good job. I don't know Michael. But uh, would he do a good job, Jeremy? Tell me. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.